schadenfreude. Everybody must have screamed, ah, he's a sung hero. A little pushy pushy. Are you back from listening to Stairway to Heaven twice? Now those are just words I looked up on the internet. Unreasonable Doubt, a podcast about West Virginia University basketball, starts now. Hello, I'm I'm walking the streets of Nitro, West Virginia, and this is Unreasonable Doubt. It's a podcast about West Virginia University basketball. I'm Josh Witt, and what a what a five weeks, five six weeks. Life comes at you fast. So, uh, the news broke a little bit ago that um, Hall of Fame basketball coach, WVU basketball coach Bob Huggins informed staff and players that he is uh, resigning from his position. Now, uh, why would he do that? Well, cut to Friday the Friday before Father's Day, and a lot of this, the news was breaking after I went to bed, is that um, uh, it started with Bob Huggins uh, got a DUI, according to like a police blotter. And then, uh, but not a lot, but then just a lot of rumor hearsay, oh, was it Bob Higgins? That got arrested, whatever, right? So Saturday morning, here it comes. Confirmed. Bob Huggins arrested in Pittsburgh for a DUI. The news also was that he wasn't supposed to be in Pittsburgh. He was in Ohio. Uh, Supposed to be in the Columbus area. Recruiting. And yet Saturday near, near a Taylor Swift concert, he, um, he was arrested for a DUI. It sounds like he was according. And so they, the police report came out and uh, Huggins caught a flat in a leased university SUV. Three fourths of the tire was, was shredded. And he was kind of blocking traffic, got out of the way, but kind of herky-jerky, had the glassy eyes and the signs of intoxication. Last remembered being at a, at a Burger King seven hours prior to the police showing up to the, to the flat tire incident. Cut to sobriety tests that were failed and he was brought in and then from there you know you know how the dominoes fall it goes uh the, the university's got to issue a statement hey we're looking into this and you know uh five weeks ago he um he said the thing on the radio and got suspended and got his contract uh, revamped to down to one year contract and uh, essentially like hey man uh, you gotta you gotta be upstanding and we'll see where it goes uh, and then at nine and then eight thirty nine o'clock my I am assuming I am not reporting this I am assuming that in talking with the university, it was a bomb. We love you. Um, here's, here's the options. You can, uh, resign. We will accept your resignation given what you did yesterday. Hold on. I think it starts like, Hey Bob, good to see you alive. Uh, that was really dumb yesterday. You're probably still hung over. That was really stupid. Could have killed somebody. Definitely could have killed yourself. Could have killed others. Irresponsible. 
Uh, you've done this before? Hmm. Uh, that's very, very, very poor judgment. So, given that, and you know how we had to, we had to have a, a conversation about judgment a few weeks ago. Here we are again. And, uh, we used very serious words a few weeks ago. So, so, so here's the part where you, uh, resign and we'll accept your resignation. Or, uh, if you don't want to do that, then I, what I've, what we've got to do is tell you, um, that, uh, you're fired. And so he got the, he got the resign. And that's it. <laughs> I mean, that is the end of a 16 season run, uh, with Bob Huggins as the head coach at West Virginia University. And it's sad. It's a sad situation. Just at a personal level, don't know Bob Huggins. And I do. I mean, it's a bit on this podcast. I wish this person the best in his future endeavors. I really, I really do wish the best for Bob Huggins in his future endeavors. Uh, it can be a, a rock bottom situation that he comes out of this. If he's able to, to battle these demons, um, coach basketball again. I mean, West Virginia is going to play Red John's or uh, Red John's St. John's. And uh, do you know, do you know the rap sheet on that coach and his age? I do. And if that guy can work his way back, uh, at his age, uh, Bob Huggins can do that. So, uh, but he's, he's got to get right. He's got to, he's got to take care of this. And, and I think he can, and you, and you cannot be shocked to see Bob Huggins on a sideline in the future. What is that man going to do that's not basketball? But think about what, what that decision on a Friday night, what that leaves behind. Uh, n- all of the excitement built on building a very strong transfer portal recruiting class, you know, that could be decimated. I don't know the ins and outs of the transfer portal. And if somebody wants to leave, what are their options at this point? It probably involves a waiver. Uh, but that could be, I know just thinking about at least a couple of the guys that came in, they were asked, why did you come? And they, you know, the first thing they said was not, um, what the NIL money looked like, but they just, they, Bob Huggins. And now Bob Huggins is not the coach. And so thus, that's probably, uh, some or all of the guys that you brought in, plus guys that stuck around, uh, Trey Mitchell and Joe Toussaint. And just everybody's in play of like, oh, he's not the coach. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna respectfully go somewhere else. And maybe, and you may sit out a season. But you may just want to get out of town. It may just be, I'm standing really close to a dumpster fire and I gotta, I gotta get away from the heat, no matter what that looks like. So that's a repercussion. <laughs> this off the court, the idea of how much Huggins has done as far as fundraising, um, the idea of, of kind of, being involved with a, a cancer center that's built in Morgantown and the amount of funds through the fish fry and the foundation named after his mother. 
what happens to to that one a night of terrible judgment really throws all of that into a state of like what what's going to happen with that and just coming off of a of five weeks ago terrible judgment to run it back and do the opposite of what you need to do to kind of hold on to how you're written about and how you're thought about as having some kind of um, uh, legacy that before these five weeks was secure, was very secure. And now how do you, how do you discuss the legacy of Bob Huggins without talking about how his career ended uh, in Cincinnati, which the first domino to fall was the DUI, and then bookended by his career ending at WVU due to a DUI. Like, that's in the first paragraph when you talk about Bob Huggins. And, and... Just imagine, I was talking, I was letting my father know because he's not on the internet about about Huggins resigning. And dad said, uh, well, I'm glad Huggins got in the Hall of Fame last season. And that's 100% right. If he doesn't get in last year, and given how these turn of events have happened, uh, he ain't a Hall of Famer. He ends up not going there. I believe that. <clears throat> and so, where does that leave? <laughs> where does that leave WVU? Well, the next few weeks are going to be interesting. What? Uh, what do you do? You're you're in the middle of June, so. You still got five months before basketball is going to take place. You've got 13 guys who all have question marks as far as where their future lies with, with West Virginia. The transfer portal is closed. And the guy, one of only two guys that got you to a Final Four uh, in your program's history... Uh, is gone. What do you do? Do you not even as far as next coach, next coach, the first thing, uh, that needs to be thought of, uh, is how to retain players. If you can do that, listen, I don't blame, again, I don't blame any of these guys for saying, you know what? <laughs> Uh, respectfully, after the last uh, six weeks, I'm out. And, and, so, and so clean slate. But given the success they had in the portal and the talent that they brought in, whatever you need to do to retain that talent is what should be the primary focus. And so as far as hiring what... That looks like, as far as achieving that goal, I have no idea what that looks like. Is there somebody on the current staff that you give a one-year interim trial balloon? Uh, hey, uh, if you keep these guys around, we'll give you a year. And if it's if it works out, Great, and if not, best of luck, and and Ren Baker can can try to get his next hire. Uh, <laughs> gosh, or you just rip the bandaid off. That it doesn't matter. That's a, that Huggins staff is around. Uh, that the guys leave, and. You just rip the Band-Aid off and start fresh. What's up? I don't know. Uh, 
but that's going to happen quickly. Uh, I think a, 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 uh, within a month and probably sooner than that, we'll see which direction the university goes. But wow, I mean, just, we all knew that just, I mean, just based on age, that it wasn't going to be a lot more years for the Huggins legacy. And so it ends at 16, 2010, Final Four, 2010 Big East Tournament Championship, multiple Sweet 16s, Hall of Fame inductee in 2022, four years of Press Virginia, for it to end this way, it's just a bummer. It's a really sad situation for for Huggins and his family. Sad for the university, sad for the fans. And oh, uh, and so that that's I mean I'm, I'm, I, I, this is sad, but I'll admit this to you. Three nights ago, I was watching Raekwon battle in Montana State's first round game versus Kansas State just to see what his game was like like for Montana State. And that guy is really talented at basketball. Uh, and the guys they brought in have good resumes. So, so much excitement. It's, it's, it's still like a gumbo of what do you got? But bringing all that together, retaining a lot of the key players from last season's NCAA tournament run. And I, I think you have pretty good expectations for the 23-24 season. And then, <laughs> and then what happens in May and then what happens uh, on a Friday night in June. And 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 then it's and it's over <sighs> what a run um what a five weeks uh i think when the dust settles uh it'll be a sad ending to his 16 years but huggins is the guy that took wvu to the final four in 2010 that stays on the on the books. That'll be in my first paragraph for Bob Huggins is as a sports fan giving me the greatest uh, month and really greatest season of WVU basketball uh, in my lifetime. First paragraph, Bob Huggins legacy for me. And then you've got, and then the second paragraph is, is, is the sad, is the sad ending uh, of his run at WVU and how, how things transpired. Man. <laughs> uh, so there'll be things to talk about into a microphone. Uh, hopefully not things that involve me having to walk it out. But that will happen in time. Happy Father's Day, everyone. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, happy Father's Day to Bob Huggins and all the fathers out there. Uh, it does. Well, let's just uh, let's just see where things go and then uh, reassess. I think I think I think more dominoes are going to fall. And they're gonna and they're gonna fall fairly quickly, and so we'll um, we'll see where the snow <laughs> the show, the snow globe has been shaken, and let's see how everything falls. Uh, Bob Huggins, uh, please get the help that you need, and I hope things work out for you. Uh, on a personal level, whatever, whatever that looks like.